Hello and welcome back to another tutorial of Force Vigor Web Penetration Testing Lab. In today's lab, we will learn web cache poisoning via ambiguous requests. Before we jump in to solve the lab, I really want to thank you for subscribing my channel and reaching it to first 100 subscribers in only two weeks. Your response is overwhelming and I do really appreciate your support and feedback to make this channel grow so quickly. So if you like my videos and find them helpful, please like, share and let me know in the comments how I am doing and how I can improve even more. So once again, bundle of thanks for supporting my channel. And coming back to our lab. So as you know, today's lab is about web cache poisoning. Therefore, I will explain the general methodology of constructing a web cache poisoning attack. So what is a cache? Cache is a kind of memory which sits between a user and backend server. It reduces the load on the server for handling duplicate requests. For example, if a user sends a request to a server for the very first time, it goes to the server, get the request and store that request locally into the cache. If a second user sends an equivalent request, the cache looks into the new request and if it finds an equivalent request stored already, it will directly serve that request without interacting to the backend server. Generally, the web cache poisoning attack involves the following steps. The first step is to find the unkeyed input values which are ignored by the cache like host, x-forwarded host, x-forwarded uh, scheme and bunch of others. The second step is to manipulate the response with something malicious, harmful and illicit from a backend server. And lastly, the aim is to get that response cached. I know this is a lot of gibberish and doesn't make any sense right now but it will make more sense when we perform the labs. So without further ado, let's fire up the lab and jump right in. Okay, so let's start the lab. As usual, we will send a request and receive a 200 response. Let's refresh our page. Forward these packets little HTTP history and check this uh, 200 response we'll send this to repeater and examine this packet okay so as you can see here we have this host that's our lab host um, so what we do we just change this to www.ping.com to see whether this website is vulnerable to host header attack okay and you see it's not allowing us to tamper this host okay and we get this error but gateway timeout so let's put our Post back and try one more time and yes we do have a parameter of validation for host head so the next step is to scan and um, numerate for unkeyed values on key inputs that I spoke about in the beginning in the presentation so we need to find out the unkeyed parameters or inputs uh, which are being ignored by the cache okay so there is an a tool that you can use to automate things and find out all the all the unkeyed inputs uh, you just need to install it's a extension for burp suite you can go here extension burp uh, b app store and then just go down to uh, sorry it's paraminer okay I already have installed this you can install and then 
you can run this extension to find out the unkit parameter so for lab purpose we don't need it so i will just keep it simple i'll go back to my um, repeater and i'll try to send a fresh response so this is called a cache buster so it, every time if you want to get a fresh response from the backend server um, you just need to send this and you will have a fresh response each time you can change this value as many time as you want and here we will get um, as I said like in the presentation we will have a host uh, x forwarded host and x forwarded scheme and those sort of uh, unkeyed values uh, just to start with I will use a second host just a simple one sorry and I will just use any arbitrary host value uh, let's say bin.com and we'll send this request uh, it's just something that you need to click enter and try again and you can see here in a JavaScript code it's reflecting our arbitrary host um, in this file and it's getting this value from a file called resources slash js just tracking dot js from this file so it's reflecting so basically we can use this file to manipulate so that's where we, we have this response so we need to manipulate and infect this response with the malware or malware or a kind of uh, code or virus to take over this website or the web page in short okay so as we know we have this uh, reflected here so we'll check whether it stays in the cache so let's remove this second host and try to send a request oh okay so if you get this error it's just like the repeater option that updates the content map. You just need to remove this, go back to repeater and uncheck this option. So if you send this, uh, and I have to just do it again. Post www.bing.com and send a fresh request again send it one more time okay it's not reflecting so we have to send probably a couple of times to see this value okay here you go so we have this value let's quickly remove our host because i think it has a um, an age of maximum 30 seconds as you can see so every 30 seconds it will update so we will remove this and send a new request and here you can see it is still reflecting our um, second host and it's not updating so it's stored in the cache okay so it's updated all right, so let's go back to our exploit server and prepare a, a malicious file or infected file on our web server from this um, So we'll go back to our malicious server and create a file um, this file resources dot, uh, slash js tracking dot js and uh, we will um, and we will attach our payload there 
Okay, so let's go back to our export server. Set on, let's turn it off for now. And we here we have our file, so we need to create the same file as uh, as we saw on the on the JavaScript. So that's the file where it's uh, getting that where it's importing the script or the URL of our uh, second host header. Okay, so in the body, paste our payload, just a simple alert. Store. Okay, so we have our crafted response here. We just copy this. And go back to our HTTP history. Send to repeater. And put our second host as the URL of our JavaScript. Let's send this request and here you can see we have we have our uh, exploit server ID here okay let's copy this response into the browser and paste it Request. all right here is executing our payload okay so here we go we have solved up that i hope you enjoyed the video and it was helpful if it is please hit the like and subscribe button and i'll see you next time